On this episode of Geek Dad Life, we're going to review Hasbro's new Ghostbusters Plasma Series Ray Stance figure. While Ghostbusters Afterlife is set in present day, well after the events of the original Ghostbusters film, Hasbro's first wave of Plasma series figures is focusing on those original core characters from the first film that we all know and love, and I can't blame them for doing that. And as a Ghostbusters fan, I'm really thankful they did because we have all four original Ghostbusters with photorealistic head sculpts, uh, great articulation, awesome accessories, and we also got a great Zool possessed Dana Barrett and a Gozer figure. So really excited to have this line that's going to be hitting uh, mass retail hopefully very soon. I'm reviewing every single one of these figures, so after this review, uh, definitely click on the links at the end card uh, to take you to all the other reviews of each one of these figures. And remember to hit like, hit subscribe, and click on that bell icon to be notified when the latest episode of Geek Dad Life drops. Hey everyone, welcome to Geek Dad Life. It's your host, Jay Glaffelter here, and we are continuing on with our review of Hasbro's Ghostbusters Plasma series figures. We were reviewing every figure from the first wave, and now we're reviewing number two on the list, Ray Stance, uh, the heart of the Ghostbusters. And uh, he looks great sitting here in the package. His exclusive accessory is going to be his ecto goggles, which he is famous for wearing. He also uh, comes with the Vince Glortho build a figure, uh, was at left uh, front uh, limb there. And uh, yeah, he's number two, and he is the second double packed figure in that shipper box. So each shipper box will come with two Peter Venkmans and two Ray Stance. So uh, out of all the Ghostbusters, uh, Peter and Ray will be, I assume, the easiest to find. Uh, love the box art. I think, uh, again, I, the side art I love. I love how the, it evokes the uniforms with the patch there. Um, and then the only probably, the back is kind of uninspired, but it works. We do have a little bio there for race dance and uh, it is very similar to the black series packaging it is bigger though than the black series and the lightning collection uh, you know by you know a decent amount uh, it comes out way uh, longer and thicker than those other figures so uh, let's open up this race dance and see what he looks like two pieces of tape on the top Unlike the Black Series figures, it is like a full, there's no window on the actual cardboard there. It is, is it a, it's a separate container for the figure. Awesome backing tray. So that is unique from some other six inch figures. All right, no little plastic ties to hold them in, which is awesome. Uh, that can be really annoying. And then we've got his proton pack. And we've got his ecto goggles, which should be over here. And the Vince Clortho build a figure piece. At the figure, he looks awesome. Uh, the Dan Aykroyd head sculpt has been a hit or miss for a lot of toy makers, uh, but this one looks pretty good. Let's bring him in close here, take a close look at the Ray Stance likeness, or the Dan Aykroyd likeness. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. And it's... it's the eyes look great, the kind of slightly furrowed brow is awesome. So yeah, I think that's a pretty good head sculpt. My Venkman figure, the patch got a little mark on it. This one looks great. All the other paint applications look pretty good. Elbow pads look good. And he has the tucked boot, which looks great. I think it looks this leg sculpt looks much better than their untucked Peter Venkman uh, leg sculpt. Uh, turned out to be bringing him in 
again, I know it's accurate. Like I'm not denying that by any means, but I just it doesn't they didn't they didn't quite nail that for me. But again, it's very nitpicky. His articulation is very, very tight. Like it's gonna take some work to loosen up these joints. But you have the double jointed elbows, ball jointed uh, at the shoulder with another swivel cut right on the side there, ball jointed head up here at the shoulder right under the patch, double jointed elbows and the, the arm elbow patch covers it up really well, gloved hand with a ball joint, no ab crunch but you do kind of have this rolling you know lower stomach uh, thing here which is great, it doesn't cut up the sculpt too much. Uh, the belt is loose. Um, here is your hip joint swivel right below the hip joints, double jointed knees, swivel ankles, then go back and forth. So a little bit more action on the on the feet than the Peter Venkman figure. We're ready to believe you. All right, let's. No, I. I think it's a different sculpt here, yeah. It's a different... Uh, the Ray stance has a bit more of a pudgier stomach than uh, the Venkman figure. Um, so a lot of uniqueness to the sculpt here. Um, you know, some of the criticisms of, like, the Mattel line uh, was, you know, their reuse of the molds. Um, but yeah, that's that stance's middle torso, torso, <laughs> middle torso is unique. He also has a clip here, which is unique from Peter Venkman. Uh, I mean, that's to hold his ecto goggles if he's not wearing them, which is cool. Um, yep. So there was no clip to hold uh, Peter Venkman's trap that I could find anywhere. Um, oh, maybe mine came out. Because look at that. I have a little hole there that I didn't notice last time. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, there's no little peg to hold this on. So, yeah, maybe, well, let me see the other, let me see the other Venkman. Nope, he has the hole too. So, interesting. Yeah, everybody, everybody but Ray, uh, or at least the ones that I got in the shipper case, so unless it's like a big problem with all of them, they all had little holes where he has a little hook for his ecto goggles, which is interesting um, because Egon has the PKE meter, which could go maybe hang up on there. So um, again, that's probably, maybe that's by intention since he can put his ecto goggles there, but he is the only Ghostbuster with that feature on his belt. So yeah. Ray, he's a unique guy. Um, much, each person's, each Ghostbuster Cyclotron has a different uh, one uh, lit up on the back. Ray's is in the bottom left-hand corner whereas Peter's was top right-hand corner. Uh, other than that, uh, the sculpts are pretty much identical. No need for them to really to be any different. Uh, so it unlatches from the Alice uh, frame on the side, and then there is the peg in the back, which attaches to his back right there. So that's how you put his proton pack on. So you just kind of Put it on like a jacket right there. Oops. I'll put it in like so. And then this is, it reminds me very much, and I wonder if this is harder because of Ray Stance's extra girth around his stomach, which it is turning out to be. Oops, suck it in, Ray, suck it in. There we go. Got it. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, ooh, and it's kind of stretching the plastic. Oh, darn it. Yeah, that's concerning. Maybe they should have customized his pack a little bit to accommodate for the extra stomach. <laughs> so, cool that they gave him a unique sculpt there, but it is making his proton pack that much more difficult to get on. It doesn't need it to be connected to stay on because it does connect to the back there. But it, I would like it to be there. 
So that's something that they may have not put that much forethought into. So we'll see how long that holds, but that is definitely uh, something they should have factored in to the proton pack design uh, to be accommodating to all the different uh, design factors of each character. So if you're going to give him a larger torso, uh, full torso apparition, um, it does make it harder to put his proton pack on. Again, the articulation in the arms is is great, it allow, and the the hand uh, positions make it very uh, you know perfect to hold his neutrona wand. Uh, but it is really stiff coming out of the package, so it, it does take a minute to get him to hold it. His damn proton pack out the side again. So that's going to be annoying. It's definitely a flaw with the figure. Um, I'm sure with a lot more futzing, I can maybe get it to stick. But still a bummer that that wasn't accounted for. In the build and again it could just be this one figure i'm not going to say it's the same for all let's see how he is putting on his iconic ecto goggles did it look great on his face that's awesome does it go over he likes to put him on on the top of his head too so let's do that let's see how that looks Not bad. So yeah, I think overall, uh, things I like uh, is that it has a, a unique torso. So, you know, and it makes each figure look more different because there are three different people. So I think that's cool. It's not a lot of reuse uh, in the mold. Uh, but because of that, the uh, I can't really get that to stay or want to stay. Again, I'll keep, I'll keep messing with it to see if I can get it to stick. But as of now, um, no, that's, that's going to be a no. So yeah, packaging uh, is great. QC is great on this figure. Uh, no issues. Again, I, I can't deem that as QC. I want to knock that one on the sculpt. Because um, to me, QC is, uh, it's just in the, in the manufacturing process. Uh, you know, if this is something that's across the board, then maybe maybe it is a QC hit. I don't know, but I think it's more of a design flaw, which I think has to, you know, ding it on the sculpt factor. Uh, but I think overall paint, everything looks great. I mentioned on the Venkman figure, I, I'm not a fan of the painted yellow hose here. Uh, I liked the way Mattel had the kind of clear hose. Um, I do like the way the boots look here. I like the tucked in boot look better than the uh, Venkman uh, untucked uh, pant leg. Um, but overall, I think it's a great likeness of Ray's stance. And aside from the uh, inability to connect his proton uh, pack strap here to the Alice pack, uh, I think it's a fantastic figure and an absolute geek dead life buy. Uh, I'm not going to do my rating on these. I figured after I did the Peter, like I'm too biased. I'm going to love these no matter what. These are shelf worthy to me. Um, so uh, they are shelf worthy to me as a huge Ghostbuster fan. If you're a Ghostbuster fan, you need to get these figures. If you're not, I still think they're pretty darn good figures and some of the best six inch Ghostbuster figures we've ever gotten. And it's not a very long list, surprisingly enough. All right, that'll do it for this episode of Geek Dad Life. If you like what we do here on the channel, hit like, hit subscribe, click on that bell icon. Uh, I'm reviewing every single figure from the Ghostbusters Plasma series from Hasbro. This one is the Ray Stance. I review every other figure. You can check out those links uh, at the end of this episode. You can also just go to my channel, youtube.com slash geekdadlife, uh, and check all of them out. Again, big thank you to Up in the Attic Toys for getting me these Ghostbusters early. And until next time, hasta luego, and goodbye. <laughs>